All right, folks, what's up? We're going to be kicking things off right away here with a uh, with a review of Kaladesh Remastered, starting off with the signpost gold uncommons, and there's two of each. So most of what we're going to be doing is sorting stuff by rarity and then sorting stuff within those rarities uh, by CMC. We found that to be super, super helpful. But um, for the gold uncommons, because uh, there's two of each, we're just going to go ahead and, uh, and, and look at them like pair by pair. So we're starting off with Azorius here with Cloud Blazer. <laughs> Fan favorite, three white oh, blue for a two-two flyer. When it enters the battlefield, you gain two life and draw two cards. Yeah, we we started with a nice one here, didn't we? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thoughts, feelings, hopes, <laughs> hopes, I mean, hopes, dreams. Yeah, all of all of the above. I mean, this is you know callback to Mall Drifter. Um, this is just a fantastic card. Uh, it's it's going to stabilize you a bit, so you can you know draw uh, use the cards that you draw and have the time to cast them. It's a nice evasive threat. In original Kaladesh, there was a kind of like a blink theme. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got like remnants of that here, but it's yeah. really dialed back, right? Um, so you you can't go as crazy as you could back in original Kaladesh. You can't like aerial maneuver it and then like cast your angel or whatever to blink it but it's still just a great card on face value yeah uh you're never going to be sad about this card and one of the things is about this card that i remember is that uh the energy decks this is a common splash right in your blue green energy decks right this is one of the cards that you would you know have a tune with aether getting a a planes and, and this is your splash card right mm -hmm. um so a lot of applications not just in blue white which if i remember correctly wasn't much of a deck uh, right. This is more. It was just like splash. I mean, much as it is often, it's just like blue white skies. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I mean, you know, I no complaints about this card. I think I'm just gonna give this card like a solid B plus. Yep, I'm down with that. I'm gonna go yeah. go B myself, but I like I like the grade here. Okay. Yeah. Next up, see. next up, we've yeah. got uh, what here? Yeah, we've got Spire Patrol here. So this is two white blue for a three two flyer. It's a human soldier. Uh, it says, when Spire Patrol enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls. That creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. Yeah, so, you know, both you and I have looked through the spoiler already, and I think mm -hmm. that white looks pretty good to me and looks quite aggressive to me. Yes. Um, blue looks medium. Very controlling, I think. I don't know. So, you don't think so? I don't think so. Well, I, Interesting. I don't know. Well, and I also don't know how good, if that's what it's going to be doing, I don't know how good that is right. for this format. Um, but I do think that if you, I think there is a world where you can build a, you know, like we said, blue white stuff, blue white skies, but I think that deck is going to want to slant aggressively. And I think this fits in that game plan quite well. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I, th I think uh, out of the blue color combinations, like blue white is probably going to be the most like tempo and most aggressive, most wanting to um you know maybe maybe be part of the kind of inspired charge uh style of decks that we're i'm sure we're gonna get talking to mm -hmm. at some point but yeah this is just a nice little tempo play one of the things that i was thinking now that we have uh like double gold cards is you really uh do get super rewarded for finding your lane right like getting paid off paid off with like twice the rewards uh mm -hmm. essentially like that's really nice if you get you know not only do you get the cloud blazer but you get the spire monitors too if your seat's really open so that's something to consider uh when considering like how open you want to be when drafting your seat in this format i'm not sure exactly how that's going to play out uh it might not be such quite the case but that's just something to consider yeah for sure it's interesting i mean not that you like you obviously play both in the same deck but cloud blazer and spire patrol are like are slightly different plans right you know? yeah like yeah. you're not mad to curve one into the other but like they do provide different things. I think. I mean, I think this is less good than Cloud Blazer, but I still think it's probably a pull into blue white in my mind. Yeah, I remember this card being good, not great. Right? It's it's like it's like a B minus, uh, maybe yeah. like C plus ish. Um, it's you're you're never gonna be sad about it, but it's not like ooh, gotta draft blue white now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. So moving on to Orzov, we have Restoration Gearsmith, which is two white black for a three three artificer. When Restoration Gearsmith enters the battlefield, return target artifact or creature card from your graveyard to your hand. And with the other card being Hidden Stockpile, which we'll get to in a minute, that sort of clues us into black white being quite grindy. I would say. Right. Yeah. It, it was interesting because it uh, black white, from what I remember, was a pretty good deck mm -hmm. uh, in original Kaladesh, and uh, it, it kind of had this like split theme where you could be more grindy with the restoration gearsmiths and the hidden stock piles or you could just be doing uh like black white fabricate and going wide inspire charging dawn feather uh evening or whatever that card's called you know just anthemming your team because there's a lot of token makers in, mm -hmm. in black and white right with right the fabricate 
Right, yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, Gearsmith kind of plays into that too, right? You can just, like, attack him with your whole team, Gearsmith something back, kind of attack with impunity. Like, that's also really nice. This is just a super solid card, right? Like, Gravedigger with a bigger body and gets back an artifact. Like, yeah. Gravedigger's already great, right? Gravedigger's great, and this yeah. is better than that because it's exactly. bigger and... And also, like, again, as you said, like, if you you get rewarded because no one else at the table can snap up your Gravedigger, you get it because you're the Orzhov drafter, you know? Right, and and unlike, you know, this one doesn't touch green, so it's not like the energy player is likely going to, like, snipe this from you, unless they're, like, going to be, like, four, four color wild energy right. stuff. Right, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, B, B plus? I think I think just, yeah, solid B for me. Yeah, I think that's a red, pretty good. All right, next one here, we have Hidden Stockpile, so Ooh, like baby. we mentioned. So this is uh, Black White for an enchantment, and it has Revolt. So this is the first instance of Revolt we've seen. Basically, Revolt uh, cares about something on your side of the battlefield leaving the battlefield. So it's almost like Morbid, if anybody's played with Morbid. But instead of something dying, it just has to leave. So it can be blinked, it can be bounced, uh, and then it triggers. So it says, at the beginning of your end step, if a permanent you control left the battlefield this turn, create a 1-1 colorless servo artifact creature token, and has an activated ability. A single mana, sacrifice a creature, scry one. Now this probably won't be as good as it was in Double Masters, <laughs> though. Yes. I, it's so funny, like looking through the spoiler, I didn't realize how, like, how much of Double Masters was just this block. Yeah, yeah, it was just well, Double Masters was just like artifact masters, basically, right? right. So they, they took a lot from from Kaladesh, mm -hmm. and and yeah. and a lot of these cards make are, are also cute in cubes. Like I'm yes. just like so familiar with so many of these cards. Um, yeah, Hidden Stockpile is great. Again, I don't know, like. I hope this, I think this deck will probably have the tools to combat a, mm. assertive aggressive strategies, but this is, there's, there's, there's a lot of wheel spinning happening with a card <laughs> like Hidden Stockpile. Yes, and, and one of the things that's a bit different, if you did play Devil Masters or you played this card in a different context, is that um, I think in this set there was less like expendable artifact stuff that you might, than you might think there would be. There wasn't like a a bunch of things that made multiple permanents where you could like sack thing and that died into another thing. There's a few around that you can get some like engines and some loops going, but uh, it, you know, it's, this is mostly going to be, you know, uh, sack your servo for value at the end of turn, scry, get another servo. It's kind of like a, a, a little small value engine. You're not going to be making a bunch of servos like with grinding out a ton of value. And important to note that you can't like block sack because it only cares about triggering at your end step. Right. Yeah. That's really important. Um, I'd, I'd probably still give this a, a B minus. Yeah, this is this is still a pull. It's still a pull. And, and uh, worth noting, it's really good in multiples, right? Oh, like, right. When yeah. you can when you can start sacking just one thing and getting two servos, that's great, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I like B minus on this card. Yeah. All right, moving on to Demir. First up is Contraband Kingpin. I liked this guy quite a bit. This is blue-black yeah. <laughs> for a 1-4 with lifelink. And whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, scry one. So, you know, there's... It's an artifact set, so there's artifact themes throughout. Some colors or color pairs rely more heavily on artifacts than others. And I think blue in particular, blue and red, but I think blue the most relies on the artifacts that you draft as well. Right, yeah. Um, it's kind of like blue, black is kind of like a controlling artifact deck. Mm -hmm. um, you do want to like gum up the ground. They, they actually, you know, uh, we'll get to it in a while. Gear Seeker Serpent is a giant blue yeah. green, uh, blue monster that gets cheaper for the number of artifacts you control. Like that's kind of your, like your blue black control payoff. Um, Aether Revolt had a few other ones, but they kind of, they, they didn't actually include them. So I, I'm not sure exactly how good this particular deck is. I don't know how many pulls there are. Um, right. Like, this, this isn't quite this a isn't, pull. No. Right. Yeah. Exactly. It's a nice glue piece, and it's a great, like, fantastic uh, defensive speed card. But it's not like a card that's like, ooh, give me, give me all the contraband kingpins, you know? Right. I, I really started to try and think about. I mean, it's it's uh, it's um, sorry. The the this idea of thinking about these gold cards as reasons versus rewards. Right. Yeah. That's is great. another way of just just basically saying it's a C plus or lower, or it's a B minus or higher. Um, and I don't think this falls into that B minus territory. This is a card you're happy to run if you're blue black, but it's not a you're not going oh yes, like you're gonna do with other cards that we're gonna go through in, in these gold uncommons. Yeah, exactly. A lot of the like you know premium gold uncommons that we think about uh, are kind of like almost like reach that build around range where like you want to uh, make your deck like uh, you want you want to have them maximized in your deck. Where this is kind of just like yeah, you'll, you'll just play it and it's gonna be good. Yeah. So I would say C plus probably. Yeah, C plus I think is is probably correct for this card. Okay, and right. then and then this weird one. <laughs> yeah, so this is, you know, I was saying it's blue-black control, but this kind of throws a wrench in that plan. So we've got Tezzeret's Touch. So this is one blue-black for an enchantment aura, and it says enchant artifact. 
Uh, Enchanted Artifact is a creature with base power and toughness 5-5 five, five, in addition to its other types. Uh, when Enchanted Artifact is put into a graveyard, return that card to its owner's hand. So it's like the the giant scissors from M15. What was right. that called? Yeah. Called the, uh... Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember it's... anymore. But, but basically, like, you turn one in of your... soul artifact or something? In soul artifact, yeah. that's it, yeah. You turn one of your dorky little artifacts into a, a giant artifact. Maybe turn a servo into a, a five five. Right. So as we'll as we'll get to when we look at the artifacts, there's there's you know handfuls of of cantripping ones. Right. Curving prophetic prism into this is pretty nice. Yeah. Um, but again, this is this is tough. This is and this will certainly win a lot of games. Like cheesing this out on turn three. Right. It's gonna win a lot of games. Right. Yeah. It's like uh, yeah. It's it's kind of weird. It doesn't quite fit into blue blacks plan that well but it's still like a fine card it doesn't it doesn't go against blue black's plan uh, necessarily um and then like you said right put it on prismatic prismatic prism uh, is really good because then you get the, the prism back and draw another card after this dies mm -hmm. um i don't know what do you want to give this i think probably still a c plus yeah it's about that it's, again not really a pull right right and i can definitely see a world where like you see one or you know see one in your opening pack pick one up like pick five that one wheels and then like once i have two then i'm like okay this is my plan yes and now i yeah. want to like try and enable these as much as possible but it's tough like just having one and thinking about blue black being a little more controlling like i don't know it'll just be interesting to see how this shakes out but i think not still not a pull into the color there's, there. there's gonna be decks where this card is gonna be really really good right yeah. where you just have like you know 10 11 artifact spells or things that make artifacts like your fabricate creatures right it's gonna go up a lot in value right but this again this isn't a card that makes you really want to build around it for example no, i don't think so all right red white both of these are <laughs> awesome but i think maybe I, i'd be curious to hear what you think now that renegade freighter isn't here so we have renegade right. wheelsmith first one red white for a three two when it becomes tapped target creature can't block this turn so that can be from it attacking or that can be from it crewing a, uh, a vehicle yeah so these cards are in my wheelhouse pun intended yeah, yeah um yeah. like when you this card i remember being quite good uh like you said works well as vehicles uh so you like you, you crew your vehicle you basically not block your five five gets in uncontested basically and then this you know alone this is a territorial hammer skull or a go without a vanguard right vanguard, right which is just really quite good and dwarf matters kind of like there's like two cards that care about dwarves or whatever um but that's very minimal mm -hmm. um this is a super like whatever you would rate uh go without a vanguard like i don't know a b i think that's what i would give this card as well, well that's that is high on Gomafada Vanguard, but I agree with B on this card. Um, right, okay. <laughs> that's fair, that's fair. So the the two so there's a lot of good vehicles at uncommon, and then the, right. there's, there's only the there's two really that we have at common, which is Skyskiff, which is a two three flyer, we'll get to that, and then uh, I forget the name, but it's a, a four mana six six with crew three. And this is like just so good with that. Lines up like stats line up so so well. Yeah, there's also the the garrison, the the three four one. I think is that that one's a common garrison. The the th it's like a three four when it attacks, untapped another creature or something like that. Oh, yeah. I don't is that a common? I don't. I know. think so. Okay, great. Yeah, I think uh, so. So I would give this a yeah. We said solid B here. Yeah, I think so. This one, this one's I, I like this card a lot. And then we got the uh, other one then, here. Yeah, next up here we got veteran motorist. So this is this is a house. So this is a uh, red white for a three one. Uh, it's a dwarf pilot. It says, when veteran motorist enters the battlefield, scry two. And whenever veteran motorist crews a vehicle, that vehicle gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. So, you know, that that seems not super impressive. But that, you know, that plus one, plus one on a sky skiff, like a two, three flyer, making it a three, four flyer. Mm -hmm. Like, that's really nice. Uh, it changes stats meaningfully. Just being able to set up, like, having this in your opening hand and just being like, all right, well, I kept a two lander. Have my three, one aggressive creature also just helped me fix my opening hand. Like, that's great. Yeah. Digging for more gas in the late game with your red, white creature. Like, it's so weird to have this on a red, white creature, right? Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I think another solid B for me. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Both I, of these I think are, solid B are as well. pulls into this color. Yeah, blue. exactly. This is, that's the difference, right? These are pulls. And yeah. I don't think the blue, black ones are pulls exactly. And same with the, the a blue, red just gets two heavy hitters yeah. here. So Maverick yeah, Thopterist is up first. Three blue, red, two, two with Improvise. So Improvise basically just means you can use artifacts to pay for the colorless uh, casting costs, right? So your artifacts are sort of like mana dorks for the, the three colorless cost of this card. And mm -hmm. when it enters the battlefield, you create two 1-1 one, one colorless Thopter artifact creature tokens with flying. Yeah, this card is great. Uh, sometimes it comes down on turn four, uh, and then that's like, you know, four mana, two two, and two one ones. That's fantastic. Uh, there's 
I think uh, one of the main improvise enablers, the the red implement, it was like a one mana uh, artifact that actually isn't in the set, if I if I remember correctly. Mm. Um, so I don't know how much of a hit that is to the deck, but uh, you know, you don't it doesn't have to. You know, losing a one mana one sucks because then you know. Uh, playing like a two mana artifact that doesn't affect the board, like a prism or something, it's a little less good because you know uh, giving up your turn one is much less painful than giving up your turn two. But this card's still fantastic, right? Like you're you're gonna be really happy with any amount of these. Can you just imagine that like going Cogworkers Puzzle Knot into this on turn? Yeah, three? that's so <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, just make two artifacts, but yeah, that, that's amazing. Ugh, yeah, so good. Uh, yeah, I think again, solid B here for me. Yeah, did you ever have the pleasure of like? having multiples of these and then casting right, and one then and then the improvising then call cast the help cast the other one yeah, yeah. exactly yeah that, that's pretty great too <laughs> yeah except then you feel like you feel kind of bad because you want to be attacking with them right sure sure yeah, yeah. <laughs> as, as bad as you can with uh four power worth of one one flyers on the field mm -hmm. yeah all right next up here we have world of virtuosos this is another sick one so this is uh one blue red for a two three of a delicate artificer and artificer actually matters there's some artificer matters cards in the set you're really, um, you're really then, going deep on you you got zendikar on the brain with all this tri dwarf tribal and artificer hey, tribal good types, types. Right? good types <laughs> yeah uh when world of virtuoso enters the battlefield you get energy 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 okay so uh just to touch on this for anybody who's a new for energy is a uh, mechanic where like you get the counters you as a player uh, get the counters so you have this energy bank basically and there's a bunch of different cards that you can spend your energy on and most of the time Cards that give you energy have a way to spend energy on it. And it's kind of like a, a little cool little trading post exchange system where, like, you know, uh, the energy get you get from other cards can be put into your world of Virtuoso. And you can just make, you know, if this is your best payoff, you can just make a bunch of one ones. And this is often going to be your best payoff. So this is, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it says when world of Virtuoso enters the battlefield, you get energy, energy, energy. You pay three energy, uh, create a one one colorless thopter artifact token with flying, and it's a two three. Yeah, this card is insane. This is like a, a B plus. Uh, yes. It's like a, re you know, energy seems a little toned down to me with the mixture of Kaladesh and Ether Revolt. Yeah. Um, it's definitely present for sure, but it seems a little toned down. It's, I think, certainly more concentrated in green than any other color. Um, I, I, just a, a note about energy. Anything that just has energy tacked onto it, like, you get a, you know, there's a, there's a tune with ether and green. There's a, a like the, the three mana black draw two lose two. Then also mm -hmm. has like, you get two energy tacked onto it. Those effects that, that feels like more than the value of the card. Right. Yeah. So you, you can underrate it, but energy is an additional resource and it's like free, right? It doesn't cost mana. So like managing it is interesting and it's just energy is a really cool mechanic. I think it like broke constructed, but it's really cool for limited, I think. <laughs> Yeah, and and you know one of the things about original Kaladesh is is I remember that blue red just kind of wasn't a deck, um, like it just the cards just didn't act, interact all that well together if I remember, um, I, you know seemingly they would because energy payoffs and and this is like your one good energy payoff, um, but it didn't often come together and so like ninety percent of the time this was again kind of like Cloud Blazer a splash in blue green. Right, this is like yeah, blue green yeah, yeah. can get a lot of energy. It, it actually is really good to get energy. It's not actually that great at spending energy sometimes, and this is like probably just one of the best payoffs. That's a great point. That's a great point. Yeah, this may end up actually being a secret blue green card rather than blue red, but right, still yeah. think a, a B plus in my mind. Yep, B plus. All right, next up we've got Rakdos. So we've got unlicensed disintegration, one black red for an instant, destroy target creature. If you control an artifact, unlicensed disintegration deals three damage to that creature's controller. Yeah, this is a this is a brutal one. Like, it, it's just you know it's a murder on its face value. But then like when you're in an aggressive deck and you have you know your opponent plays a key blocker on turn four or turn five and you kill it and deal them three and get into big hit like yeah. that's nuts. Yeah, right. Um, and it's it's hard to give this card anything less than like I kind of want to go a minus on it almost. Whoa. Um, yeah, just wow. because like what a, what a paper boomer rating removal so high. I know, right, right. Well, it's it's better than that, right? It's 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 the cheap, <laughs> really cheap removal, right? And it is better than just like a one for one removal spell. Like you're getting more on the exchange. Um, like just the fact that it is a murder, which you're gonna give like a, you know a BB plus anyways, and then in those aggressive decks, it's 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 even more than that. So I, I'm gonna go a minus on this one. All right, I'm going. I'm I'm not getting suckered in by removal. I'll go. I'm that's going, fine. I'm that's going fine. B plus, but I like the yeah, enthusiasm. 
All right, next up, we have uh, Weldfast Engineer. Uh, so this is one black red for a human artificer. It's a 3-3, three, three, and it says, at the beginning of combat on your turn, target artifact creature you control gets plus 2, plus 0 oh, until end of turn. Yeah, this... So this pairs the best with Fabricate. Like, being able to turn right. your 1-1 one, one servos into 3-1s, or if you have Thopters, though I think you don't have Thopters outside of blue-red. I don't mm -hmm. think red just on its own creates Thopters. Um... I remember this card being really tough to deal with. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember thinking, like, okay, it's, like, not a big deal. Like, right. they'll play it, and it's like, all right, cool, whatever, I'll just trade off. But then, like, kind of like you said, like, they play a servo, and you just have to keep trading off, right? It's mm -hmm. just like, you know, they play a 1-1, one -one, it's like, all right, well, it's a 3-1, I can't just not block that, right? I have to either trade or take the damage. So. And this is a relevant body on its own. Like, a 3-1-3-3 yes. three, three on its own is also good. Like, this could just easily have been a small, or, like, a 2-2 two -two or whatever. Right. Yeah, um, it's it's not it's it kind of borders on like a pull into it or a nice payoff when you're in the color combination, right? It's like just down that edge, I think. So I I think I'm gonna give this a, a B minus probably, yeah, maybe C plus. I'm, I'm down with B minus. Yeah, I, it's interesting. I think I'm gonna start with this pulling me into to Rakdos. Yeah, that's fair. I like that a lot. All right, the snack. Winding yeah, Constrictor, <laughs> black green for a 2-3 snake. If one or more counters would be put on an artifact or creature you control, that many plus one of each of those kinds of counters is put on that permanent instead, and the same goes for counters on you, so that would be energy. Right, so, uh, you know, we just had uh, Conclave Mentor in M21, and this is, this card, that card calls back to this card. Mm -hmm. um, this, so so in Kaladesh, you know, not with Aether Revolt, this card was from Aether Revolt, but in Kaladesh, not Aether Revolt, there's like, a black green counters deck, which, you know, if you're thinking of black green counters from Zendikar, you might be not be super impressed, but it was actually a pretty decent deck. Um, mm. Just the creatures in that deck were just quite good, solid creatures, and there were some nice synergies. And then uh, when Aether Revolt came out, like this card was just like the payoff for that deck too. Like this card is absolutely brutal. Um, there's a lot of incidental one one counters running around. It's it's not, you don't have to work hard for them like you would in um, in, in Zendikar, for example. Like they just kind of are, are there. Um, there's, there's creatures that put counters on themselves uh, more often than you'd see in Zendikar. This card is the definition of a pull, right? This is the definition of a card that wants you to be in green-black. This is a card you'll take early, um, and you're going to be happy with. You're going to build around it, and it, it's really, really difficult to beat. I think i got to look through the spoiler again with this card in mind, because at first glance, unless we're talking about energy, I don't know how... Th this. I don't know. Outside of, like, there's some Fabricate stuff... But right. Black's Fabricate creatures aren't great, right? It has, like, the 4-mana 3-1. I don't know. Is this card super supported? So I, th I think it might be a little bit less supported than it was originally. Um, there might be, like, you know, a 10% or 15% dip. But I think it's still probably good enough. You're right. We, we might actually see it be, like, less impressive. But there's, like, the thriving creatures. Like, you know, the like you mentioned, the energy ones. Right. Um, yeah, there's, that... like, there's, like, Subtle Strike, which, you know, we're familiar with from Zendikar. There's a few other things here and there. Curving um, this into Thriving Rhino is going to be gas. Yeah, that's just backbreaking. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, start, I'll start B minus. I'm, I'm a little yeah. skeptical, but I think still a pull. I'm, I'm going to go with B on this one. Right. Um, I, I I could even be tempted to be B plus just because of how good it, it is when you get there, but I'm, I'm going to go B on this one. And then what what's going on here? <laughs> yeah, this one. So this is Hazardous Conditions. This is two black green for a sorcery. Creatures, you, creatures with no counters on them get negative two, negative two until end of turn. So... Uh, th this one was really bad. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's no easy way to, to say it. But yeah. Like, so so ju if this card was just four mana, uh, negative two, negative two, it would not be very good. Right? That's just not a great rate. Like we do three mana, negative two, negative two. Sometimes makes the cut. It's sometimes better in some sets than others, and sometimes it's unplayable. Um, but that effect on its own is not great. Now you might think you know you play you know in your deck with your, your green black counter deck, you're going to be able to break that synergy. You're going to be able to give negative two to their team and you know nothing on your team dies there just happens to be like you know counters running around your opponent's just gonna have creatures with you know a random thriving creature where they're just gonna have a counter and it's not gonna affect it even still they're gonna have big creatures a lot of the time one of the um you know if you're facing a green deck one of the things with the green decks in this format is green kind of gets to play its role where it is actually just bigger than yeah, the other creatures this is one uh, of the rare times that's true yeah yeah exactly um, so it just, I, I just remember this not killing very much. Uh, and, and I don't think I ever got gotten by this card. Yeah. I, I, what is this? A C? 
C minus. I th- I think it's just like a C minus D, like cyborg. Wow. There's not even a cyborg. Yeah, you can't. I was like, I was gonna say, yeah, there's yeah. no cyborg grades here, baby. Yeah, I I don't think I don't think you want to be playing putting this card in your main deck very often. It's like a twenty third playable if you're specifically in a black green deck with a lot of counters. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Next up, we've got Simic. So first up is Imperial Voyager, one green blue for a two three Vidalcan Scout with flying and trample. And when it deals combat damage to a player, you get that many energy. I was I was watching uh, Crokey's set review yesterday, which was mostly him just saying that every card was terrible, which was <laughs> highly entertaining. But he first read he read the first card he read with energy. He was like, "You get lightning bolt. <laughs> what is lightning bolt?" <laughs> So, so good. So, yeah, this card is sweet. Yeah, this is a nice one. Um, repeatable energy source, which is real nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Not that many of those floating around. Yeah, exactly. Um, your opponent likely has to deal with this uh, when, when it comes down. Just, you know, imagine this with a, you know, if you were so lucky to have a World of Virtuoso on the splash, right? Just, like, making two Thopters every other, you know, three turns or whatever. That's pretty mm-hmm. nice. But then there's just like, you know, even the thrive, the, the cycle of thriving creatures that we're talking about, which by the way, we should mention is just like this cycle of creatures that not all of them are in the set. Actually, I don't think they all, they all got transferred over. But, but, I, but, but again, it's like this weird hybrid of yeah. either there's the, there's the cycle. It's half ether creatures. Yes. Which <laughs> come in with energy and then make servos when they attack. Right. And then the other half is, is the thriving creatures that come in with energy. And when they attack, you can use the energy to uh, put a plus and plus one counter on it. Yeah, basically, there's a there's a creature at common in each color that it you know lets you spend energy each turn if you have mm-hmm. energy, yeah. right? Which when which it is, attacks, when it attacks, yeah, exactly. So mm-hmm. so that's really nice, and and this feels that. And worth noting, if you happen to like need a lot of energy in a burst, and you have like a pump spell or something, you can oh yeah you know, for sure, <laughs> you know, get five energy with your your giant growth or whatever. So yeah, it's a nice little beater. The body is just uh good, and it, it'll close out the game if you've also stalled the game, uh, stalled the board out. So yeah, I think just like a, a solid. B minus on this one. Oh, I'm I'm going B. Oh, it's, you're going it's, higher. It's okay, green. Okay. It's green. I have to rate it high. I like know? it. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, all right. Right. Oh, next one. Okay, we got a nice one. This is this one's great. This, this is, is this is Refiner. worse than the other one. <laughs> you think this is? You think Road Refiner is worse? Is it not? I mean, it's, it's I think good. This is better. This is this better. Is, Ethan, right. Ethan, this is banned in standard. Come on. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> this is yeah. one green blue for a three two human rogue, and it says when Road Refiner enters the battlefield draw a card and get energy energy i forgot that it can't trip okay okay yeah, yeah. okay yeah <laughs> if it better. just made energy yeah that would yeah. suck but yeah okay. uh this card is great this yeah, card is fantastic b plus yeah this is a b plus right kind of like what you said earlier with energy feeling like uh you know half of a card sometimes like this is just a efficient solid two for one uh with kind just... of like a two and a quarter two and a half for one right yeah yeah exactly um it, it, even if you're even if your deck has zero uses for energy this card is amazing, right? This card is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, B, I'm, I'm probably going to go B plus on this one. Yep, me too. All right, awesome. All right, uh, Gruul, sad <laughs> Gruul. Outland Boar, two red green for a 4-4. Four, four. It can't be blocked by creatures of power two or less. So we saw you, this. He, this was just green in Ravnica Allegiance, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was the the Seratok thing or whatever, the, right, the yeah, I know yeah. thing, yeah. Yeah. Can you think of a more boring gold card than this? Boring? Like, <laughs> Are you? Did you really say boring on purpose or no? I did. I didn't actually. That okay. was that was that one was not intended. Wow. But, uh, wow. I, I think we're done here. Um, <laughs> Show's e, over, folks. Let's wrap it up. Yeah. This is. I mean, like again, this feels like a C plus. Like it's not a pull into the color pair. If I'm in the color pair, I'll happily play it. But yeah, this isn't exciting at all. Yeah, absolutely not a pull. Like C C plus. I think I would just give this. Yeah, I, it's, it's hard a, to give it's it a C. C. It's not a C. No, you're right. It's not a C. It's, but it's like I want to give it a C. Big and you know? can't be chumped by servos. Like that's exactly a, that's that's good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna All give right. it a C plus. All right. So next up here, we have, we have this one's this one's actually pretty nice. So this is Voltaic Brawler. This is red green for a three two. It says when Voltaic Brawler enters the battlefield, you get energy energy. Whenever Voltaic Brawler attacks, you may pay energy. So just a single one. If you do, uh, it gets plus one plus one and gains trample until end of turn. That's a big beater. Uh, yeah, this card is huge. For sure. Yes, yeah, attacks for four on turn three. Um, red green, like red green's one of those decks uh, if I remember where it's just like there, so. There's uh, you know the the blue green energy decks. Um, they kind of made uh, an excess of of energy. They were just like going off making a bunch of energy. Uh, decks like uh, red green and kind of like you know the, the white decks that kind of you know just had some energy cards these decks more just 
had cards that gave you energy, ways to spend energy on the same card, and then you didn't really make that much energy past that, right? So you'd have, like, sometimes you're like, oh, just, like, incidentally have my attune with Aether that can, you know, get my Voltaic Brawler in for a third big attack. But it's not like this is attacking for four over and over and over. So you have to right. consider that, yeah. right? Still I, very good, though. I think, again, fine, C+, plus, not, yeah, pu- I, not pulling me into the color. I think this is, I think this is... Not a pull, but I I think on power level I would give this a, a B minus. I think it's it's just good enough. So what does that mean? You're giving it a B minus? Yeah, I give it a B minus. Uh, that's crazy. That's <laughs> Not a fan of this. You're gonna you're gonna die to this card a lot. I can guarantee. I mean, it's a good card. It's a good card. I'm not saying it's a bad card, but I don't <laughs> think you're going. I I think you are gonna be passing this a lot in your first whatever four or five picks in the draft. Yeah, sure. That's fair. That's fair. I still think it's very powerful. All right. We, we're, we're, we're splitting hairs, but yeah. we'll, yeah. Uh, all right. Renegade Rallier this is our last color pair here, Selesnia. One green, white for a 3 2 with Revolt. When ATBs, if a permanent you control left the battlefield this turn, you return target permanent card with CMC two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Yeah. Solid. It's, it's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not excited about this one. Yeah. The problem is, is like on turn three, you very rarely are like, yeah, you can, you know. The dream scenario is you have a two drop, they have a two drop, your two drops trade, you play this, you get back your two drop. Right. Yeah. Is, uh, it, it's good, but fine value creature, right? Yeah. Sometimes you get back like a small artifact that you sacked earlier or something like that. But yeah, I this one certainly falls in the category of not a pull for me. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So C plus? C plus. And that's okay. Similarly. Yeah, so got engineered might. So this is three green white sorcery. Choose one. Target creature gets plus five plus five and gains trample until end of turn. Or creatures you control get plus two plus two and gain vigilance until end of turn. Uh, I remember this card going last a lot. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Just just part of, like the combination of it being a color pair that was not great, um, and the combination of this effect. Just if you wanted this effect, like the the plus two plus two the anthem. You can just get that at common in white, right? There's there's inspire right. charge, and it, it yeah. just basically or Dawn Feather thing. Eagle or Dawn Feather Eagle, exactly. This is a nice redundancy, right? Mm-hmm. If you don't pick those up, but this is not like a, a giant pull by by any means. The the plus five plus five uh, will you know probably be relevant in some amount of games where the board's really stalled out and you just have like a, a big flyer that you just one shot them instead of you know I mean but even still you're probably going to be given the plus two plus two. It's um, like a C. So, yeah, it's it's like a C. It's it's very replaceable and it's not uniquely powerful. So I yeah, I'd give it a C. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll pick back up with the uh, gold rares at the end of this, and I'll probably tack them together for YouTube. We'll see if I yeah, sounds get, good. Get uh, spicy there. So that that's gonna do it here. Where we left off, we started with the gold on commons. Now we'll check in on the rares here, starting with a Johnny Unyielding. This is four green white for a four loyalty walker. You can plus two to reveal the top three cards of your library. Put all non-land permanent cards revealed this way into your hand and the rest on the bottom in any order. Minus two, just straight up sword supply shares, right? Exile target creatures, controller, controller gains life equal to its power. And minus nine, you put five plus one plus one counters on each creature you control and five loyalty counters on each other planeswalker you control. So still, still worse than Tusker. The, yeah, the, you know, the ultimate is worse than Ridge Scale Tusker. Right? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're gonna make those comparisons. Uh, this this is another one of just like the the better Planeswalkers for limited for, uh, limited, for sure. I mean, yeah, the, yeah, the if you're on any sort of stable board, the plus gets it up to six loyalty, and you're mm-hmm. you're drawing cards. And there are a lot of cards too. You put all all the non land permanents. All in the non land like, permanents. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, all creatures. Yeah, that's creatures yeah, and artifacts. What is that? That's one. That's generally yeah, creatures and artifacts. I guess that's. Did one or two cards. You're drawing like one and a half cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Um, and then just just minus two kill their best thing is pretty ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Straight up. This is another. This is another A. Yeah, it's another A. It, it's not quite Chandra level just because no. it's six instead of instead of four, but it's all very 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 good. Right. Right. Fantastic card. I I am willing to give this an A. All what's, right. What's this one? <laughs> this, this is a weird one. So this is uh. Dark Intimation. So this is two blue, black, red. It's a Grixis. Okay. A sorcery. Each opponent sacrifices a creature or a planeswalker, discards a card. You return a creature or planeswalker from your graveyard to your hand, then draw a card. Okay. So that's that's the main, main part of it. This price, next part's never happening, but it says, when you cast a bull-ass planeswalker spell, uh, exile Dark Intimations, uh, 
and that planeswalker enters with an additional loyalty counter. This is just so, ba- baby ultimatum. Baby ultimatum, and it's not a very good version of it. Like, it, it's not worth uh, stretching your mana base. There's like, if it was green, if this was like a teamer card, sure, I could see playing it. But like, yeah. you're just not gonna get the colorless fixing often enough. Like. You could pick up three Renegade maps or whatever, but it's not worth it to, to cast this card. It's just not that good of a card. Right? The effect just isn't that good. Yeah, I think this, this is... is like a D. I think this is a D minus, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You're, you're just not going to be playing this card. Next up, it's, it's pretty sick that red gets like two really good uncommons, red white gets two really good uncommons, and then uh, also this good rare. DePaulo there it is, here's the dwarf payoff, finally. Dwarf payoff. One red white for a 3-3. Three, three. Other dwarves you control get plus one plus one. Each vehicle you control gets plus one plus one as long as it's a creature. Whenever Depala, pilot exemplar, becomes tapped, you may pay X. If you do, reveal the top X cards of your library. Put all dwarf in <laughs> vehicle cards from among them into your hand, then put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Kind of got Akiri vibes, honestly. Like Yeah. Very, very similar. Yeah, this card's this card's very good. Um, great, great build around card. You're, there it's is not just really, it's a, not a build around. <laughs> like, yeah, it's not a build around. Red white. Be, well, I mean, yeah, there's just gonna be yeah, exactly. You're just gonna have vehicles and dwarves in your deck. There, yeah. There's a decent amount of dwarves just running around. Like you're, you're not even gonna notice that. Oh yeah, it's just randomly a dwarf, right? Um, this card is very, very powerful. Uh, I think I'm gonna give it a B plus. I am also gonna go B plus. So our, all of our disagreements are behind us, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think so. So, so next <laughs> one we have uh, Dovin Bond. So this is two blue and two white blue uh, for a three loyalty planeswalker. So, so not that much to start with. Plus one until your next turn up to one target creature gets negative three, negative O, and its activated abilities can't be activated. Negative one, you gain two life and draw a card. Negative seven, uh, your opponents can't untap more than two permanents during their untap step. So it's, it's not, Dovin's not that good. He's okay. Uh, like, he doesn't come in with a lot of loyalty. His plus locks something down, which, you know, it's, it's going to take something he out of protects himself basically. pretty well. Yeah, yeah, he, he does. Uh, you know, negative draw card, it, it's fine. The, the ultimate takes a while to get there, and it's not even not that, that good. No. It's not that good when you get there. He's like a B-level Planeswalker. Yeah, I'm down, I'm down with B. Yeah, and that's a you know, decent splash in your, your energy decks or whatever. Right. Yeah. Uh, Combal Console of Allocation is one white black for a 2-3 whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell they lose 2 life and you gain 2 life yeah this is a solid card this is like a C plus uh, this isn't I, a pull into Orzov. no it's not but I, I think so it's not a pull into Orzov, and, and I, I do agree with that but I think when, when you are in Orzov, um, this card is is really annoying like any non-creature not just a spell right vehicles uh, you know people are going to be playing vehicles they're going to be playing like puzzle knots and whatever like implements like imagine this is three mana two three drain four but that's good i i yeah i get i'm giving it a c plus you're okay, not you're not fair. bumping me up to b minus okay that's right i'm gonna give it a b minus i think i think it's a little bit but so that. you are you're, you're seeing this and you're like let's go black white um it's not like it, it's on the edge of a pull i it's on the edge of a pull all right. All right. Next up, we have Oath of Ajani. So this is a green white for a legendary enchantment, and it says when Oath of Ajani enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control, and then Planeswalker spells you cast cost one less to cast. So it's uh, Bastard Solidarity. When I put a counter on all your creatures, which is good. I think right? that's good. And I think it's going to be a little bit better in the set just because there are, are all those like counter synergies in green too. Right. That matters yeah. a lot. Um, this two, is like two mana root scale Tusker. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like a C plus, right? Yeah, B minus maybe. I'm, I'm, I'm in for C plus again. I don't. Yeah, I think ha- happy to have it in green white. Not a feels like a reward to be green white, not a reason to be green white. Yeah, I, I, I can get down with that. Oh, I love <laughs> this next card. Rashmi Eternity's Crafter, two green blue for a two three. Whenever you cast your first spell each turn, reveal the top card of your library. You may cast it without paying its mana cost if it's a spell with lesser CMC. If you don't cast it, you put it into your hand. Yeah. Really good. This is really a good value engine. Very, very powerful value engine. I think. Yeah, I, I give this a solid B. Uh, so it's basically it's basically like Cascade, right? Kind of, but not quite Cascade. You can't. You don't always cast the spell. You don't always get to cast it. Yeah, yeah sometimes you do. Yeah. 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 It, it is fragile, but if it sticks around, it's it's just gonna win the game. I mean, this, this card is good in cube. Right. Where like, yeah. it's it's a lot easier to deal with this, and like, I I, I just think this card's super powerful. Yep. I like it a lot. Yeah. 
All right, next up we have Sahili Rise. This is one blue red for three loyalty planeswalker, three mana. Plus one, scry one. So Sahili Rise deals one damage to each opponent. Okay, very, very marginal, but fine. Negative two, create a token that's a copy of target artifact or creature you control, except that's an artifact in addition to its other types. That token gains haste, exile at the beginning of your next end step. Negative seven, search your library for up to three artifact cards with different names, put them onto the battlefield, then you shuffle your library. Hmm. C? Yeah, like a C, C minus. She's she's not great. Like, there's a few cute things you can do with her yep. negative ability. But you play if you're in blue red, you will play this card. You'll play, yeah, you'll play it. But she's like on the on the lower end of playables. I agree. Uh, last up here in terms of the uh, gold rares and mythics is Tezra the Schemer. Two blue black for a five loyalty walker plus one. Create a colorless artifact token named what is it? Ethereum cell, I think. Ethereum cell. Okay. Oh. Uh, so it's, it's like Lotus Petal, right? It has yeah, it's Lotus Treasure yeah. token, it taps, sack the artifact, add one mana of any color. Minus two, target creature gets minus X, minus X until end of turn, where X is the number of artifacts you control. And minus seven, you get an emblem with, at the beginning of combat on your turn, target artifact you control becomes an artifact creature with base power and toughness, five, five. Hmm. This is interesting. I think this is a, a like, I think I see this pack one pick one and i go all right let's let's draft blue black artifacts yeah i think it's it definitely a, a powerful card definitely a good card um it, it's it's not as uh you know hit you over the face powerful as like you know, some of the other ones we've seen mm -hmm. but uh it's it's definitely good like the negative ability yeah you're gonna be able to kill a small creature if you, if you need to and mm -hmm. the plus helps you get there and also it ultimates pretty soon too right yeah, yeah and, I and like that ultimate isn't until end of turn, as someone in chat has pointed out. All right, just stay. It stays a five five. Right. Yeah, yeah it stays a five five. Yeah. Um, I think it's like a build around B plus. Yeah, I, I like that. I like that great a lot. Build around B plus. Okay. Um, and then we just got a handful of lands to take <laughs> a look at. First up here is Ether Hub. Uh, it enters the battlefield. You get an energy. It taps for colorless, and you can tap pay an energy to add one mana of any color. Yeah, um, this is this is a pretty good land for splashing. Um, this is not your you know uh, unknown shores type card. This is actually a good land because you're yeah. always gonna make you're always gonna make uh, you know your your colored source the first time, and a lot of times you're gonna be able to make multiple you know multiple colored yeah, sources. It's, it's funny that this like the, the color that produces the most energy is the color that needs this the least. Right. Well, it also just like you know helps you splash you know around a bunch, right? Like mm -hmm. it, it kind of is that prophetic prism. So I, I like this card quite a bit. I mean, you're not going to pick it highly unless you're in an energy deck. But when yeah. you're there, like it's it's really good. I'm going to say it's a C. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. And it's going to be one of those cards where like once you start to lean towards those energy decks, you're going to be like, oh, okay, I actually do want to value the tiger. But you know, before that, you're not going to take it too early. Yeah. Wait, right, next up, we've got uh, Inventor's Fair. So this is a legendary land that says the beginning of your upkeep, if you control three or more artifacts, you gain one life. It taps for colorless mana, and it says uh, four mana tap, sacrifice an enter's fair. Search your library for an artifact card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library, and you can only activate that ability if you control three or more artifacts. I like this card. Yeah, it's a nice little value card, right? Like, it's not hard to get to three artifacts uh, if, if your deck is, you know, you know so somewhat building around it, quote-unquote. Yeah. And once you do get there, you, you get to get your best artifact of your deck, and you gain some life, which is nice. So, yeah. I think this is like a C plus. C plus, yeah. Okay, that's great. Next up is Spire of Industry. Taps to add a colorless, and you can pay one life to add one mana of any color, and you activate this ability only if you control an artifact. Yeah. Um. So this is probably probably on average better than uh than Aether Hub if you're yeah. like just comparing those cards. It, it's a good card. Yeah. This is this is solid. I mean, they're they're. They're close, right? They're pretty comparable. I, I'd yeah, say this, pretty comparable. this is probably C plus for me. Yeah, you're never you're never taking this card highly, but it's it's yeah. uh, a good splash card, uh, good card to help you splash when you want that kind of thing. And we got a full cycle of these enemy fast lands. Is that what? Yeah, they fast are? lands. These are the fast lands. Uh, so there's five of them. Um, we can look at concealed courtyard here is, is the black white one, but they enter the battlefield tapped unless you control two or fewer other lands. So turn one, two, three will come into play untapped. Otherwise, it comes into play tapped. Yeah, and like you know, it, it, they're strictly better than the you know the the chap lands at uncommon or common that we're used to seeing sometimes. Like, 
fact that you can draw this in turn two and just be like, oh, okay, I just drew this here and I get to play play it on tap. That's really nice. Um, again, same it's the same thing we say every time with dual lands, right? Not high picks, but when you uh, are in the colors, like it's like, okay, yeah, cool. Like I, I might want to pick this up. If you're in black nothing. white, this is a C plus for you. Yeah, there, there's nothing super exciting in the pack. I'm just gonna be, I'm just gonna take the good mana fixing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. All right, that's it, buddy. <laughs> that's it. Huh? Yeah, we did it. We did it. Any uh, before I, I I stop recording here for for YouTube, any final thoughts, feelings, hopes, dreams, concerns? Uh, I think that green is great. Uh, I both uncommon and common and rare to be yeah. frank. Like this is fantastic. I think I think blue really really has trouble. I, I honestly think blue seems real bad. Blue seems real bad. Like, in not even just uh, the, the its actual cards, which, you know, some it has good cards. I don't want to say it doesn't have good cards. But, like, its curve is so painful. It's going to be a fine support color. You're not going to be base blue almost almost ever, I think. Or, I mean, if you are, you're, you're not going to be in a great place. Or you're going to have all the high rarity cards, right? That, those are the, the, the few situations, right? I think, yeah. It's funny because, like, outside of blue-white... In mm -hmm. theory, I like the blue color pair. I'm like, ah, oh, I, I can see, I can see reasons to be blue black. I can see reasons to be blue red yes. and blue green. But whew, I, probably blue blue green is probably the best because like then you're fine playing the one three that gives you energy or the oh four that gives you energy. Like th that feels like the best home for blue stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a tough sell. I think yeah. I, I'm I'm really into the white curve out go wide deck. I think that's gonna be really good. Yep. Uh, yeah. So I feel like green and white are front runners for me. Like I feel like I feel like Naya is yeah that's... is 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 king for me at the moment. With me too. With black being fine, and blue being bad. Yeah, that's that's my take on it too. I think I think exactly in that order. I, I might put red above uh white, but it's it's close either way. Like just because red gets good removal and white kind of doesn't, right? You think you you have red ahead? You said. Yeah, well, I think red had a just just because like yeah. welling sparks and and Chandra. So so initial green. rankings would go green, red, white, black, blue for you. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm I'm down with that. Down. With yeah. That uh, sure. I mean, big big picture. I, I think it's gonna be like reasonably fast. Like I I don't think it's going I think to. That's a good baseline. Yeah, I, like I don't think it's gonna be. Uh, you know, it's not going to lean to like the the dirtle end of the spectrum that some of the Kaladesh decks had. Uh, I think it's the the Ever decks are are more supported than the dirtle decks, especially because like the tools for stopping early aggression just like aren't that great. Is the thing, right? Yeah, I so, think that's true. It's not not a lot of incidental life gain, right? Like, yeah, no, no, there's not really. Green gets Arborback Stomper, White gets Airdrop Aeronauts, like as big five life boosts um, i mean the best control color is kind of green like it's weird right because well, green just, like, also has great beat down i think green yeah green green yeah. best color for when was the last time that happened mm. maybe m21 <laughs> I mean, white, white was the best color yeah yeah it's uh it's been a while yeah it's been a All while right. well thanks everyone for for hanging out and whatever medium you did we'll be logging off here for for youtube and and for the podcast but yeah thanks for hanging out